The Lord said that His yoke is easy, that His burden is light, and it, and it is the best life because His ways are wise. He knows life better than we do. He's the creator of it. He's designed it all. And as we follow His ways, we are truly blessed. And it's God's wisdom that, that Paul is chiefly praising here. He is the only wise God. So, of course, it is wise to follow His ways, to live according to His wisdom. His wisdom is seen in many, many ways. In fact, I think the more perceptive we become, we see it everywhere, in everything. We see it in all His works. We see His wisdom in the things that are around us, the, the order and the beauty of nature. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, the psalmist said. But, but as great as that display of wisdom is, it is the, the wisdom that God revealed in the mystery that Paul has spoken of here that, that called forth this response of praise from, from Paul to the only wise God. That God's grace could abound to the Gentiles of all people and abound to them as it did. That, that amazed the Apostle Paul, a man who came out of Judaism steeped in the law and this sense of separation in which the Gentiles were dogs and on the outside, outside the pale, and then he's brought into this to become the Apostle to the Gentiles and his whole mind was changed and he sees things he had never dreamed of in Gentile salvation. That, as I say, amazed him. They were lost, they were in utter darkness, they were separated from Christ, they were outside of Israel's covenants, they were without hope and without God. In the world, as Paul told the Ephesians, they were the pagans, they were the heathens. But those same Gentiles have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And not only near, they have been made equals with the Jews in Christ, they've been made fellow heirs with Him only great wisdom could bring Jews and Gentiles together as equals in the same family with love for one another. Only God's unsearchable wisdom could bring about Gentile blessing as God has done through Jewish failure. That's what He explained in chapter 11. Breaking off natural branches of the olive tree in order to graft in wild branches. But through that ingrafting, by means of Gentile salvation, God will provoke Jews to jealousy and ultimately save Israel. And, and through that salvation of Israel, bless the whole world with blessing beyond anything the world has known. Now that is a, a plan of wisdom that astonished the Apostle Paul. But every aspect of God's plan of salvation shows great wisdom. It, it confounds the wisdom of the world and makes the wisdom of the world look foolish. Wisdom is a branch of knowledge. It is the skillful use of knowledge in selecting and adapting the right means for fulfilling the best purpose. To understand the greatness of God's wisdom in salvation, we must understand the greatness of the problem that His wisdom solved which was how to preserve God's righteousness, how to preserve God's justice while saving sinful people. How can a holy God forgive sinners and remain holy? He cannot ignore sin. He can't simply wink at sin and pretend it didn't happen. That would be unjust. That would be unholy. He must deal with sin. But He cannot at the same time ignore sinners because God is love. It is His nature to be merciful. And so the problem to be solved was how to save sinners and be just in doing it. Or to use the words of chapter 3, how to be just and the justifier. And God's solution was found in a substitute. And the only substitute that there could be, His own Son, who was qualified to represent men because He became a man and a perfect man and able to save not only another man, but a whole multitude of men and women, and innumerable, an innumerable multitude, because He is not only man, He is God, the eternal Son of God. 
He made a perfect sacrifice which demonstrated God's glory in His love and justice which has been said, kissed at the cross to save Jews and Gentiles alike. That is a plan that man could not have imagined or implemented. And so Paul says to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, be the glory forever.